Welcome back to the garden. It is the beginning of June and today I'm going to talk about uh, what I'm planting now. So plants for June. For me, June is all about um, starting to think about the winter actually. Well, that does seem a bit weird. So succession planting and also those things that grow very quickly like lettuce that I want to keep eating through the summer. So it's all about preparing. The greenhouse is empty. So there's a seed shelves all clear. We've still got some bolting lettuce and obviously tomatoes, but the greenhouse for seeds is empty. So now there's plenty of space for some more seeds. I've got my assistant running around outside somewhere uh, who's going to help me with the compost and I'm going to show you how I mix my compost for uh, sowing some seeds. We're going to film today I threw, uh, there's four things, five things maybe we're going, to, we're going to plant and I'll show them to you as we go. Let's go. Okay, so this is today's plan. So we've got um, some Swedes which we're going to plant uh, May to June, so about now. We've got some parsnip, which is traditionally horrendous to get to germinate, so we're going to give that a go. Some nice, easy lettuce. I've got some of that growing in the garden already. I don't have any of this one, so that's going to be good. And then some cucumbers. Again, now it's a bit late for cucumbers, but frankly, I've had a bit of a disaster with cucumbers this year. They've really not liked that we've had a cold spring. It's only really warmed up today, and so they're growing really, really slowly, and they've just been predated. I've got one plant left, and I usually have four or five, so I'm going to give it a go and just see what happens. But some more cucumbers, so let's get into it. All right, so first job, and I may help my assistant here, is to mix some seed compost. Seed compost is very sandy and gritty, so with that it needs, uh, seeds can grow. Yeah. Now, as seed compost, I'm going to mix this with some, uh, let's look at that, with perlite under there. I'm going to do it 50-50, uh, so okay. there'll be 50 parts, or half rather, perlite to seed compost. And that's because I want to make sure the soil isn't too dense. There's lots of pockets of air, which is what the perlite creates. It isn't to do with water, that's more vaniculite. So this is perlite. So that'll be um, perlite. We're adding four more of the compost that add four more perlite. Then I mix it all together and that will ensure it's roughly mixed. And quite um, frankly, guys, get in there with your hands. It's way better than using a spade. Feel the compost, it's good for you. Well, there you go, nice and full. I'm just gonna get in there with my hand and mix it all up nicely. So that's the mixed compost and perlite. Now I'm going to do all four um, seeds for the trays at the same time. So I'm going to fill the trays up next. Uh, the lettuce, they will need to be sowed almost on the top of the tray. So I'll fill those mostly with top and they will scatter at the end. Um, these two trays, the pasta and the sweet, I need to fill maybe a half. I need to go quite deep in the soil. I will though just uh, address the elephant in the room, which is you don't normally transplant parsnip or sweet. You grow them, by them directly into the ground, just like carrot. However, uh, as you probably know if you've been watching social media, this year slugs are rife. Um, and quite frankly, because my garden is quite rural, I really struggle with direct sowing. So I've tried with carrots and beetroot, sowing these modules and then planting the whole module. And that's worked quite well with the carrots and the beetroot. So that's what we're gonna try with these. When the onions are cleared, I'll probably do another sowing direct to soil to see the difference. So I'll show you that when I get there of the parsnip and the sweet, and we'll just see the difference. So quite frankly, a bit of an experiment. Let's see. So that's the trays nice and full. So again, the lettuce ones are for almost at the top, and the other ones are about half full for the root veg. So if we go ahead and sprinkle. So this is <laughs> no one near as careful as I expected. That was the red lettuce. I'll then do the green lettuce in this one. That's the, the web's wonderful. And then the parsnip and the sweet and these two. So I'm going to do it quite sparingly. I'm going to save some seed for direct sowing later. Okay, so seeds are now on top of the compost. The parsnip seeds are pretty big, so you can see those. Uh, and the swede seeds are microscopic, so you can't. So next stage, we're going to cover them up and give it a really good water. Uh, the last step with the lettuce is to gently squish them down, not so hard, on top with uh, the frame. You don't, don't need to do it on those ones, Ali. Okay. That's fine. And I made them, if you want to look, I've got a video on my channel how I made those, um, but so I can't remember called. But that's uh, to make sure the seeds, the small lettuce seeds, are in good contact with the soil. Right, last step, can you get some water, please? Uh, yeah, I'll give them a good water. It needs to be really even, so I'll have to do a bit myself, I suspect, because that's not so even. But that's the idea. And the nice thing about having an assistant is it's great for the kids, and I to do less work. Hooray. Good job, well done. Last tray. And the last thing I'm going to do today in terms of sowing is I'm going to sow these cucumber seeds in these pots. I'm going to put two per pot and I'm going to put them in there along their long edge so they're sideways in the tray and that should be that. Our right, last thing I'm going to do today is chilies. Now, um, this is my first sowing of chilies. They, believe it or not, have been in the ground since mid-January. And this is from April and they're almost as big. These ones over here have been pinched out. I think I've obviously done that wrong. So I'm going to pinch the top out of that. That will encourage it to grow side shoots. You can see it on that one. 
there. It's much, much better. Um, yeah, and they're, they're growing really slow. Why are they really slow? Um, because it was cold. So they just haven't grown very fast in the Yorkshire. Uh, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to grow them on and I'm going to see if I get anything off them this year. Maybe, maybe not. September, October time, just about. But I'm going to try and overwinter some in the house, which I've never done before, and see if that is a solution to growing chilies in Yorkshire. There will be a way. We're going to find it. So for the chilies, I'm going to use a different compost. This is a general purpose compost because they're more established plants. And the pearl and mixture were different. We're going to go for two pearl scoops to four uh, compost scoops. So a bit more compost to the mixture. To show you on the screen what I've done to the plant now, though the root ball is just below the surface, I'm just filling it in a little tiny bit, and that one is done. Do the same with all the other ones, and they will then hopefully grow one nicely in those three inch pots. These ones, which are obviously seedlings, they're going to go in that tray when I'm finished. Okay, so they're potted on, I water for more at the end. I'll now show you how I do um, bottom the seedlings, and uh, it's the same for any seedlings, albeit this is easier because these are really big, unless the seedling is much more tricky. So. I fill the tray with the compost that I just mixed, and just so the seedlings that the tray is already done, I use sticks. So this is a, a what is this? A lolly stick. So I use a lolly stick. I make a hole just like that. There you go. It's just about visible on the video there. And then I'm going to use the lolly stick to dig out a. Uh, we'll go for this one here because it's easy to get to. Dig out a plant, a seedling. And because they're in nice gritty soil, it should be pretty easy, as it is. There you go. Now, you could just use the stem, but that's actually quite tight there. Probably this is a little bit too long, actually. So I'm going to do it this way, just to pinch at the bottom. That is not ideal, but I'll do. Because the root there is pretty big. Can you see? There you go, it is pretty big. Ideally, it wouldn't be that long, and I would do it with the leaf, but I probably left those too long. So. That'd be right. I'm going to just make it slightly bigger with my finger and I'm going to drop it roots in the bottom first. There you go, maybe I'll put a good picture all the way in there. Making sure now I haven't touched the roots, which is quite important. But honestly, I mean you watch some of these videos and there's lots of things said about being super careful, you must damage this, damage that. Quite frankly, most things are fine. I am not particularly gentle in gardening, as you'll see. But that's, that's it, so I'm going to pass on the rest and I'll show you the job done in just a minute. And we're done. The last thing I want to show you was, was this, which is a vermiculite. Now, I had put that on the other trays over here. We did first earlier in the video. Vermiculite. What vermiculite will do, it stores water. So unlike the perlite, which is all about aerating the soil, vermiculite will store water. It's a, uh, it's a volcanic rock, it's a bit spongy. So I put that on the top which helps keep water within the compost below. And the other thing I do is put them in trays where I can because I can put water in this tray. So in the summertime, as now, I can keep them on the shelves in here, put water in the tray in the mornings, or the evenings rather, and that will allow the tray to stay moist because otherwise these smaller pots in particular are really um, challenging to keep moist when the plant's growing when it's too hot. So. I'll probably do that same with these trays too, but obviously these are all sitting in trays already, so actually they're probably okay. But that, but that's it for now. I'll come out the greenhouse because it's boiling. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. That's a few things for June. I'll be doing some more sowing later in the month, I expect, uh, as things start coming out. The onions, etc., will need replacing. Hopefully, that's where the uh, parsnips and um, swedes will go. But that's it. So if you didn't get some value from the video or enjoy it, please do give us a like and subscribe to the channel because that will really be great. Other than that, I'll see you next time. Watch out for the shorts that is more often, usually two or three a week, and I'll try to get a video done every week. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.